But today, as always, first up, it's time for not to be skipped. It is time for me to tell you exactly what I think of Odell Beckham Jr. I don't know Odell. All I've done with Odell is go back and forth with him on occasion on social media. But I know a lot of people who do know Odell. I know some very close friends of Odell. And I think I have a pretty good handle, a pretty good inside view of what Odell is really all about and not all about. I like Odell personally because I get the sense from everybody around him, he has a good heart. He's actually, down deep, a really good guy. I divide the world, probably overly simplistically, into good hearts and bad hearts. Odell falls on the good heart side, no doubt. But when it comes to what I believe in, in a winning football player, Odell is little to none of the above. Odell, to me, is way more style than substance. Odell, to me, is way more sizzle than steak. Odell, to me, is a whole lot more of hip height than Hall of Famer. Odell Beckham Jr., in a shock to me, has wound up in Hollywood playing for the Hollywood All-Stars, known as the Los Angeles Rams. In a Super Bowl in Hollywood, staged this Sunday at the Rams Stadium, so fine stadium. How did it come to this? Wait a second, Odell Beckham Jr. is by far the biggest name in said Super Bowl. What? He is, by far. I've covered so many Super Bowls, dating all the way back to Super Bowl X, which was also Cowboys versus Steelers in Miami. It's a long time ago. Every Super Bowl has been about the quarterback. It's been Joe Namath. It's been Joe Montana. It's been Brett Favre, John Elway. It's been Troy Aikman. It's obviously been Brady, 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 and more Brady, leading to Mahomes leading to Odell Beckham Jr., by far the biggest name in this Super Bowl. Time out. Odell Beckham Jr. hasn't made a Pro Bowl in six years. Seriously, not in six years. How many national commercials do you see Odell in? I, I can't think of one. You know why? His friends tell me that he doesn't really have a big, charismatic, personality that works on commercials. As an interview subject, he's not great. He's not captivating. He's not commanding. He's not overpowering. Seen Odell quoted that much this week. Here and there, dribs and drabs. Nothing to write home about. Nothing memorable. His friends tell me he's really pretty introverted. That he can be very quiet very reserved, very to himself, off camera. So, so wait a second. How does he have by far the most followers in the National Football League? He's got 15 million on Instagram, four more million on Twitter. That's 19 million followers. That, that's more than Brady. That's impossibly great. Or is it? How did this happen? this Odell phenomenon. Well, you know how it started. It started against my Dallas Cowboys back in 2014 on a Sunday night at Giants. You know what happened? Bolt out of the blue, a lightning bolt out of the blue, out of the darkness in the sky came a lightning bolt. Down, down, down it came and Odell caught it with one hand diving backward over his head, snatched it out of the sky over my cornerback, Brandon, used car. Chris Collinsworth on NBC, this was Sunday night, 
immediately called it the greatest catch he's ever seen. I can't argue with that. Maybe I've seen a couple approximate it since, but it was all time great. And Odell segued from that catch into pregame shows that were much better than his in-game shows from that point forward. It was what I remember of the Harlem Globetrotters, where you just went to see the Showtime show. You, you went to see the trick shots, the magic acts, and that was Odell, and has been Odell ever since, pregame, catching it behind his back, between his legs, over his head, one hand, no hand, catch it in his teeth. It, it's, he, he puts on a show of shows pregame, that works in this day and age because it's all about image making, especially on the gram. All that works on the gram. And yet, here went Odell on the field over the edge. As a giant, he became known as the biggest soap opera star in the soap opera capital that was New York City. Because it, it, it was the young and the restless all rolled into one number 13. It, it was all my children in one man child that was Odell Beckham Jr. Because he would just lose it during games, lose his poise, lose his way, drive his coaching staff and his teammates nuts because he went nuts. And DBs, starting with Josh Norman, realized they could just push Odell's buttons all day long. Remember when he went after Josh Norman after whistles? Lost it, man. Craziness. Suspended. Fame. Fortune. Made for social media. It's video. It's pictures. It's the cleats. It's the hair. It's the watch he wore, the giant watch he wore during a game. Friends tell me that Odell is gifted at posting. He gets the game, how to play the IG game. He just has a knack for it, a drive for it that works, that connects. He knows how to feed the fire with this challenge and that challenge, this dance and that dance, gifted at it. To me, much more gifted on the field I'm sorry, off the field than on the field in that the more I watched him in New York, I kept asking, this is a great football player? Is this what his teammates want? Is this what Tom Coughlin wants? Well, obviously not. And yet so many Hall of Fame receivers that I know started to gravitate toward Odell Beckham Jr. And I'm saying, why? It's, it's the opposite of what I see in a Hall of Fame receiver. It's the opposite of my man, Michael Irvin. I've made the case, Michael, greatest receiver ever because I covered him in Dallas for those 90s dynasty cowboy teams. He was the leader of those teams. I often said I wanted the playmaker in my foxhole for big NFC East games at Giants, at Eagles, at Washington. Gamer, baller, guts, backbone, Jerry Rice. Again, more of a, a follower than a leader to me. Michael was definitely a leader, but Jerry Rice had guts. Jerry Rice had drive. Jerry Rice would cut your heart out. Odell, he just made my heart hurt watching him. This is greatness? He had one great year in New York the first year statistically, and then his, st his stats started to drop, 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 and drop. Soap opera rose higher and higher. Acclaim rose through the roof. Next thing I know, he's at LSU's national championship game. Obviously, he played at LSU with Jarvis Landry. And he's splashing money all over the field after the game, obviously against NCAA rules, real money, not play money. Big bills, throwing them everywhere to LSU players. No, can't do it. But 
it promoted Odell, even if it threatened to get his old college in trouble. And then the next thing I know, he's in Paris. I think it was at Fashion Week. And he's in a Paris hotel room with a model and what looked like white powder. And it created a firestorm of controversy, but it promoted Odell. And by the way, I've read that one team interested in then acquiring Odell as he fell out of favor with the Giants, put a private investigator on him trying to check out any potential drug use and came up empty. Odell's clean, got no problem off the field with, with any sort of misbehavior in that regard. But on the field, my betting on Odell Beckham, no. I'm sorry, it's one thing after another. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.